Welcome back to the Brett Tax Channel. Today I'm going to do just a little bit of a rant to explain why when we stand up on a motorcycle, we are in fact not lowering our center of mass. We are raising our center of mass or our center of gravity, but also explain why this myth is continually perpetuated. And I've talked about this in several videos in the past, including one about the most common myths of riding off-road, where, and where I demonstrated why this actually isn't the case, that we are not, in fact, lowering our center of gravity, center of mass, but yet the comments continue to come in to tell me that I don't understand what I'm talking about, and then, in fact, when we stand up, we lower our center of gravity or center of mass. Let me get into this, and then also, if you're already understanding this and you already know that, yes, in fact, we raise our center of gravity, I'm going to explain why this is confused with unsprung versus sprung weight, because that's what we're actually feeling is the effects and changes of sprung or unsprung weight, but that only matters if you're doing it correctly. So I'll get to that at the end of this. To start off with, all we're doing is taking two objects or the mass of two objects, and we're just trying to find the center. The simple explanation, I have a 100 kilograms on one side, I have 100 kilograms on the other side. If they are equal weight and I find the exact center point, you would believe that that is the center of gravity or center of mass. And in fact, you would be correct. I'm using center of mass and center of gravity interchangeably, even though these are in fact two different definitions. Center of mass is referred to the center point of those two masses. Center of gravity, although it is the same here on planet Earth, is actually an effect of the center of mass and the gravitational body pulling against it, which means the farther away we get from the planet Earth, you'll see that there is a divergence of the center of gravity and the center of mass, and it starts to shift. But here on the planet, since we're on motorcycles, these are in fact the same location and are commonly interchanged and that's okay. So I'll use both center of mass and center of gravity here so that we, we're okay with that. What we do is we just take a simple equation. We're just going to take our position in the distance between the two masses or the center of these two masses. We're going to take that position and we're going to make an equation based on distance, and we're going to do the same thing on the other side, divide those by the entire mass, and that'll give us a position on this line exactly where that center point or where that balance point is. We'll just talk about that being a balance point. If you had them on a, on a, uh, on a scale, then that's how that would work. This does mean that you can change your center of mass based on where you're standing, meaning that if I were to crouch down, my entire mass is now more combined and is closer to the center. Whereas if I stand up and raise my hands and feet in the air or toes, then I'm gonna actually raise that entire center of mass. This is uh, why when we are in an athletic position, we, we crouch or we get more aggressive, it, it allows us to lower that down and become more balanced. Now, if we were to assume that our rider is about 100 kilograms, that's 220 pounds, and then we take our position that we have here on the entire distance between the two, we've got 100 kilograms, we multiply that times zero. We're gonna take that and we're gonna multiply it times the, the, the mass of the motorcycle. I'm gonna go with a 200 kilogram motorcycle, that's 440 pounds, so we've got 200. And we're going to use a measure or a distance of three. And what we do is if we go 100 times zero, that's a zero. If we take 200 times three, that's a, that's a six. So we have 600. We divide that by the combined mass of both the rider and the motorcycle, which is 300. When we get done with that, that's two. We take the two, we subtract it from the total distance, which is three, which leaves us a position of one. Now looking at this particular height, if in fact uh, all of our weight was carried in our head and all of the weight of the motorcycle was carried on the bottom, then that would give you some reference, but it really doesn't matter. This is a combined center. So in this case, the center point between these two masses, the exact center is 1.5 on a measure of three, but in fact, the center of balance or the center of mass, center of gravity would be a measure of one. 
which is slightly closer to the larger object. For most of us, that makes sense. Now, if we were to stand up on the motorcycle, or we were to extend the difference or the distance between these two masses, and all we do is change that one number, and that's the distance, we still have a 100 kilogram rider multiplied by zero. We take the 200 kilogram motorcycle, we multiply times four. Now what we end up with is a combined of 800. We divide that, we still have 300 here. That leaves us with 266. If we take 266 and we subtract that from four, we end up with a measure of 1.34. What we've done here is the distance from the larger mass to the smaller mass here is a measure of one. The distance here is 1.34. In fact, by raising the distance or changing the distance between the two masses, we have in fact raised that center of gravity or that center of mass. This doesn't matter whether we're standing on the seat or the foot pegs, the combined mass remains the same. Now the reason that it feels like we've actually decrease that is because we often become unsprung or we become sprung weight versus unsprung weight. And what that means is if we were to, to take a mountain bike and go down a trail with absolutely zero suspension sitting down on the bike, it's the bike, it's you, the bike, and then the impact of that bike hitting everything. And it's a very rough ride. It's very unbalanced because every time that bike hits a, a rock or some kind of obstacle, it's rebounding all of that mass together. There's nothing absorbing it. And once it goes in motion, that heavier mass takes longer to recover cover. If we were to add a spring to that, what that does is create some isolation. So when that suspension actually hits, it compresses the spring and transfers some of that energy into the spring itself and removes the effective impact or energy that's going into that object. This is why manufacturers spend a lot of money and research creating lighter components at the wheels. Lighter axles, hollow axles, we have lighter rims, we have lighter tires. This is why when you have a spring that is tightly wound, you would put the tight wound to the top rather than to the bottom if you're looking for ultimate performance because half of the spring would be sprung and half of the spring would be unsprung. Anything you can do to lighten up the wheels on your motorcycle are going to allow it to respond more quickly to changes in the ground. And that becomes the unsprung weight. You want as little unsprung weight as possible. Now, sprung weight is not a bad thing. When we have a heavier rider or heavier uh, motorcycle, that actually gives you some stability, can give you more traction. Uh, also, we can shift it and alter where that traction is, and that's one of the benefits of standing on a motorcycle. This is why I teach standing when I'm teaching my classes, because we have more effect on where we move that center of mass and how it transfers out to those other aspects. But if we just stand up on a motorcycle and we stand there rigid, as most riders do, even though they feel like they're moving around. If I video them and when I'm coaching them, this is the number one issue riders have when training with me, is that they are too rigid on the motorcycle, they do not move enough, and they stand way too high on the bike. And what happens is that now you have an entire mass, a fixed object with a raised center of gravity. But as soon as you now decouple from the bike and you become a spring on a spring, you essentially end up with two layers of suspension. So you have your, your mass at the bottom, which is your unsprung mass. You have your motorcycle, which is now sprung on top of the wheel that is moving on your springs. And then you with your legs and your arms are sprung above that. So essentially what we should see, if I were watching you ride your motorcycle and it was going across, I would see your tires moving very rapidly. I would see your motorcycle moving slower and I would see your head moving not at all. And this is the best way to allow the bike to maintain better traction, better control, and also to allow us to move left and right so as that motorcycle tilts and shifts that we maintain a better balance and we neutralize the forces of gravity, centripetal force, uh, acceleration and deceleration, which are the primary ones that we're usually working around.
So standing has a huge effect if it's done properly. But if you believe that the idea is I stand up to lower my center of gravity or my lower my center of mass, that is absolutely 100% incorrect. I'd like to thank all of you who are supporting this channel through Patreon. I am working on trying to get better sound control in my, my area here where I do these talks or these rants to make sound better. Your contributions are being saved up to help me do that. So thank you very much for, for making that happen and for without you, these videos are not possible. If you'd like to come train with me in person and my other instructors, then you will find those classes at brettax.com. They're pretty limited. I follow the best weather around the country. There's generally only one or two classes per region per season on the East Coast and the West Coast. So take a look at those. Those classes have already started for this season and I will be done teaching those in July. That's my last time that I'm teaching for the season and then I'm going you know, overseas to do the overseas tours. Thanks for watching the channel. Thanks for sticking around for the rant. I'll see you guys next time.